Hello tech friends, I've got a treat for you today. Imagine it's Christmas Day. It might even be Christmas Day for you right now. And you're looking under the Christmas tree and there's a large package and it's all wrapped up. And you unwrap it thinking it's a games console or something like that. But instead, it's one of these. It's an electronic lab from Maxitronics. This one's 130 in one. Hold on a second. This isn't a games console. What is this, an educational toy, is it? Well, this may well have sparked an interest in electronics that lasted a lifetime for you. This is the fun way to learn about electronics and study the wonders of science. So there we go. That's mum kept happy. That's dad kept happy. Um, and uh, yeah, sure, you might have wanted a game, but we're going to have a look at some of the experiments you can do with this. Um, it says here, start a great hobby in electronics. No prior knowledge needed to assemble. Spring coil connections make it safe and easy for anyone to use. Includes detailed step-by-step -step illustrated manual for easy project construction. Built-in radio, AM broadcast station. A broadcast station? What? Uh, electronic organ. Toot toot. Kitchen timer. Uh, I mean, you could <laughs> you can move this around the house and use it in lots of different applications, logic circuits and more. Uh, comes with built-in speaker, seven-segment LED display, two fully integrated circuits, and rotary controls. These came in loads of different sizes. This is sort of like a mid mid-range one, I would say. You'd get ones and they'd be like seventy-five in one or fifty in one, and there's a, a quite a fancy-looking one which is three hundred in one. That'll keep you going. Let's open it up and see what we've got. So, we've got a chunky manual. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. Um, inside here, this probably was packaged a little better when it was, uh, when it was first sold. Um, but we've got the actual... Let's move some of that out of the way. <laughs> this is the electronics lab itself. Get the box out of the way there. Look at this thing. So, it does indeed have these sort of springy connections between uh, these different... Uh, points all over this thing. You've got sections for resistors, capacitors, a transformer. You've got a radio circuit here, twiddly knob. You've got control up here for doing various things. You've got a speaker. You've got a little display there, a little switch. Got to have a switch to switch things on and off. Um, a sort of multi-select switch there, diodes, batteries, all sorts. Um, and on the back, if I can flip this over, these are the batteries uh, that I bought it with from a charity shop in the UK. Amazing. They're still in here and they're still okay and they're still charged all right. So I've checked all of those and they're all okay. Um, so we'll get to trying out some of the experiments in just a minute. Let's have a look inside the owner's manual as it's described here. And this is, I mean, this is a thick old beast. Look at that. Um, and you can see it's got your circuit diagrams here. Um, and it's uh, telling you a little bit about what that circuit will do. Um, but notice down here, you've got wiring sequence. So it's literally telling you to connect there. It says one hyphen 29, two hyphen 30. You're, co you're connecting number one uh, to number 29. And if you have a look on the actual uh, device itself here, that's number one. And then 29 is over here, the speaker. So you'll be connecting these things up and you can connect multiple ones within the same little spring bit there that's pretty cool um but that's that is experiment 86 we've got an led strobe light here and an electronic organ and look we, we've got a we've got some history from the previous owner someone called stuart white 28th of the 12th 2005 they've done the electronic organ one that's pretty cool so it must have been bought as a christmas present if it's the 28th of the 12th i think that's pretty cool um the, that particular person hasn't done too many in here, um, or at least they they haven't recorded that they have. If I go back to the beginning, um, here we are. Now that guy was Stuart White, TW, who could that be? Um, maybe Thomas, 29th of the 12th. And then for the earlier ones in here, you get the actual sort of drawings of how they're connected. But as they get more complicated, that, that doesn't really help you. Um, so we'll try out a couple of these, I think. Um, and I think what's what's interesting about this is it's really taking you from the, the simplest possible ones at the very beginning. Um, gives you a bit of a explanation before we begin. You know, this is this is exciting. We've even got a quote here from Lord Kelvin, 1883. Um, 
When you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is a meagre and un unsatisfactory kind. So buy your uh, electronic lab kit today. He, they, you'd have to wait a bit though, 1883, um, for this thing to be available. This is from Radio Shack, it looks like here. Um, so I'm going to assume it was a Radio Shack brand, but you could get these from um, Argos and a bunch of other places in the UK. Right, enough dallying. Let's pick a couple of these and we'll give it a go. In fact, let's let's do the uh, one that has previously been done. Whereabouts is it? Oh, the sound effects. Here we go. Yeah, let's do number 12 horror movie sound effects. And so we can see uh, we've got to connect all these different wires. So we'll whiz through that bit and then we can give it a go. Right, then the tricky part is where do you place all the different bits? to work off okay so we've got lots of different uh lengths of wire here and actually when you'd have bought this i think it would probably just have been one color would have been one long ream of wire like like this green one here like this one hasn't actually been cut up at all um but the previous owners have cut all of these different ones to different lengths so yellow ones for them are in not very long <laughs> that's what i've learned and blue is kind of um they've decided that one's going to be about about this long well that's great you know that that saves me a bit of mucking about when we're trying to connect these right let's get started okay so 75 77 and then this is the final one final one okay 73 here to 85 which is just a short leap. Let's use a red one. Was it 73 to 85? Oh. Okay, we've already got some noises coming out. Oh. Okay. Now... I haven't connected the last wire there. I don't know if it makes any difference or not, but <laughs> that... <laughs> so um, let me just disconnect that last one. There we go. Okay. Um, so, right. Just to explain what I've done here, if I may, just reading from the manual here, it says the sound that this circuit produces will remind you of the scary music you hear in horror mov movies after wiring the project. Uh, use your use your special light shield and your hand to change the amount of light that falls on the CDS cell, which is this one here. Um, the music changes in pitch. The pitch of a sound is determined by the frequency of the sound wave, the number of cycles. Okay, let's not worry too much about the <clears throat> the uh, scientific details. Let's just make some weird noises. Uh, so there is a sort of an extra plastic bit um, in here, which goes over the top of that that um cell there and then if i just connect it again then if i move my hand over it i think you can uh tell that that's kind of like a um a theremin i mean that's probably going to annoy mum and dad on Christmas Day, isn't it? But that is really cool. I didn't need the very last wire between 85 and 84. It just started to come to life. Um, and we've got the, the diagram here. So look, TW291205. I think it's only right that I add my name to that, to that list. Tech Weird, maybe that's what it stands for. W-O-T, Weird Old Tech. And it is the 24th of the 12th, 22. About 15, 16, 17 years later. Still working. Excellent. Right, let's try something else that's in here. Okay, this next one I'm going to try out here is the wireless code transmitter. This has got to be like Morse code, surely. I haven't tried, I haven't tried it yet, but uh, we'll give it a go. You need to have a, a radio on the go as well. So uh, here's said radio, tuned to an AM station, it says. This project is simple but effective. 
a code transmitter like the kind used by military and amateur radio operators around the world. When you press and release the key, the transmitter turns on and off in sequence. You can use a common AM radio to receive the code sent out by its transmitter, tune the radio to a weak station. We'll get to how you actually do that last little bit in a second um, after I've uh, wired it all up. We've got a fairly simple wiring sequence here, so let's get cracking. Right. Okay, so we've done all the wiring for this one with this very long uh, aerial uh, antenna lead on the end. Um, and it says here, you can use a common AM radio to receive the code sent out by the transmitter. Tune the radio to a weak station. Um, the transmitter signal mixes with the transmitter signal mixes with the station signal to produce an audio tone called a beat note. This beat note is what you hear as the code signal. Use the tuning capacitor, which I think is this here. Um, to tune the transmitter until you can hear the beat tone in the receiver when you press the key. Um, all right, I'm going to need about four hands here. Um, you can receive the carrier wave signal of the transistor on the communications receiver without tuning to another station if the communications receiver has a beat frequency oscillator. What? The BFO beats with the old transmitter CW uh, signal and produces the tone. Okay. Uh, -da 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 -da. A transmission reception is very reliable, very efficient. In fact, it is the most reliable type of transmission for some emergencies. You might find that you do not need an antenna, but if you, uh, but if you do need one, two, or three feet of wire, uh, that will probably be enough. Right, have fun. It says have fun. Let's make sure we have fun. Okay. Okay. Here's our radio. Let's. Oh, I can hear something. Okay. By some weird way this does actually seem to be working so i've i've got the radio tuned to sort of it's kind of static but it feels like there's something there like there's a station that's trying to get through as opposed to like here we are it's very quiet here right now i'll just move that to one side you'll still be able to hear it not a magic trick um we've got the aerial here i feel like that might have something to do with it um, and then we've got this sort of selection wheel here, and if I press down on this button, it actually makes a noise on the radio. It's probably not the noise I was expecting. I was expecting a nice clear beep. But it is sort of making a noise, and if I adjust this wheel while I'm holding it down, it kind of, it sort of tunes it in. Uh, so it's here between sort of five and six that I can sort of tap a message out. I mean, I mean, if you were in an emergency situation and you needed to use this to um, uh, send for help, uh, I'm not sure anyone's uh, anyone's going to pick pick it up. I'd be twiddling with this knob as my as my leg falls off. Well, how about that? The electronic lab. Uh, 130 in one. I've shown you just two. Oh, I should put my name in the book to say that we've done this one. Let's do it. Weird old tech. And we did this on the 24th of the 12th, 2022. And there's loads more to do in here. Like, you know, we, we've said we've got the LED light here. We've got a control knob. We've got two integrated circuits. And I think I think what's quite cool about it is it shows you what the sort of wiring diagram equivalent of these things are. So like down here, you've got the resistors and they're represented by the zigzaggy line, which then corresponds perfectly with uh, the diagram, the wiring diagram, which are used in proper uh, wiring diagrams. So there you go. Did you have one of these or a variation of it for Christmas one year or maybe for a birthday? And were you disappointed when you opened it initially? but then really got stuck into it and, uh, and enjoyed fiddling about with all these wires. Um, maybe it sparked you off into an, a career in electronics. Maybe that's what you do now. I would love to hear about that in the comments, as people like to say. That's about it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.